Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 94. I'm so glad you're here today. We're going to be reading out of Leviticus chapter 6, Proverbs chapter 26, Romans chapter 3, but only verses 21 through 31 today. And then we're going to close out the day with Psalm chapter 65, verses 9 through 13. So let's get started with Leviticus chapter 6. This has been some rough reading, I'm not going to lie. But let's see what it has for us today. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, If anyone sins and commits a trespass against Yahweh and deals falsely with his neighbor in a matter of deposit or of bargain, or of robbery, or has oppressed his neighbor, or has found that which was lost, and lied about it, and swearing to a lie in any of these things, that a man sins in his actions, then it shall be, if he has sinned, and is guilty, he shall restore that which he took by robbery, or the thing which he has gotten by oppression or the deposit which was committed to him, or the lost thing which he found, or anything about which he has sworn falsely, he shall restore in full, and shall add a fifth part more to it. He shall return it to him to whom it belongs in the day of his being found guilty. He shall bring his trespass offering to Yahweh, a ram without defect from the flock, according to your estimation, for a trespass offering to the priest. The priest shall make atonement for him before Yahweh, and he will be forgiven concerning whatever he does to become guilty. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. The burnt offering shall be on the hearth on the altar all night until the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. The priest shall put on his linen garment, and he shall put on his linen trousers upon his body, and he shall remove the ashes from where the fire was, has consumed the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. He shall take off his garments and put on another garment, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. He shall lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. Fire shall be kept burning on the altar continually. It shall not go out. This is the law of the meal offering. The sons of Aaron shall offer it before Yahweh, before the altar. He shall take from there his handful of the fine flour of the meal offering, and of its oil, and all the frankincense which is on the meal offering, and shall burn it on the altar for the pleasant aroma, as its memorial portion to Yahweh. That which is left of it Aaron and his sons shall eat. It shall be eaten without yeast in a holy place. They shall eat it in the court of the tent of meeting. It shall not be baked with yeast. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, as are the sin offering and the trespass offering. Every male among the children of Aaron shall eat of it as their portion forever throughout your generations from the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. Whoever touches them shall be holy. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and, his, and of his sons, which they shall offer to Yahweh in the day when he is anointed. One-tenth of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering perpetually. Half of it in the morning, and half of it in the evening. It shall be made with oil in a griddle. When it is soaked, you shall bring it in. You shall offer the meal offering in baked pieces, 
for a pleasant aroma to Yahweh. The anointed priest that will be in his place from among his sons shall offer it. By a statute forever it shall be wholly burned to Yahweh. Every meal offering of a priest shall be wholly burned. It shall not be eaten. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, the sin offering shall be killed before Yahweh. It is most holy. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat it. It shall be eaten in a holy place, in the court of the tent of meeting. Whatever shall touch its flesh shall be holy. When there is any of its blood sprinkled on a garment, you shall wash that on which it has on which it was sprinkled in a holy place. But the earthen vessel in which it was boiled shall be broken, and if it is boiled in a bronze vessel, it shall be scoured and rinsed in water. Every male among the priests shall eat of it. It is most holy. No sin offering of which any of the blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. And that is how they take care of that. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 26. Like snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. Like a fluttering sparrow, like a darting swallow, so the un undeserved curse doesn't come to rest. A whip is for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the back of fools. Don't answer a fool according to his folly lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. One who sends a message by the, land, by the hand of a fool is cutting off feet and drinking violence. Like the legs of the lame that hang loose, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As one who binds a stone in a sling, so is he who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn bush that goes into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of a fool. As an archer who wounds all, so is he who hires a fool, or he who hires those who pass by. As a dog that returns to his vomit, so is a fool who repeats his folly. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The sluggard says, There is a lion in the road. A fierce lion roams in the streets. As the door turns on its hinges, so does the sluggard on his bed. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He is too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who answer with discretion. Like one who grabs a dog's ears is one who passes by and meddles in a quarrel not his own. Like a madman who shoots torches, arrows, and death is the man who deceives his neighbor and says, Am I not joking? For lack of wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. Our coals, as coals are hot, <laughs> as coals are to hot embers and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindling strife. The words of a whisperer are as dainty morsels. They go down into the innermost parts. 
Like silver dross on an earthen vessel are the lips of a fervent one with an evil heart. A malicious man disguises himself with his lips, but he abhors he let me start that over. Verse 24. A malicious man disguises himself with his lips, but he harbors evil in his heart. When his speech is charming, don't believe him, for there are seven abominations in his heart. His malice may be concealed by deception, but his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. Whoever rolls a stone, it will come back on him. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Whoa, that was, that was a cautionary tale, very heavy. Sorry for the distraction out my window. Um, it looked like a couple neighbors weren't getting along too well. But they both left, so that's good. Uh, moving into Romans chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. I have this highlighted big time. I think it's going to be good. So now, apart from the law, a righteousness of God has been revealed being testified by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all those who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God sent to be an atoning sacrifice through faith, in his blood, for a demonstration of his righteousness through the passing over of prior sins in God's forbearance, to demonstrate his righteousness at this present time, that he might himself be just and the justifier of him who has faith in Jesus. Where then is the boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. We maintain, therefore, that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the law of or is God the God of Jews only? Isn't he the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also, since indeed there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. No, we establish the law. Yes. All right, moving into Psalm 65, verse 1 through 8. All right, you visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide them grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows. You level its ridges. You soften it with showers. You bless it with a crop. You crown the year with your bounty. Your carts overflow with abundance. The wilderness grasslands overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The pastures are covered with flocks. And the valleys are so clothed with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. So how that has come, how today has come full circle. 
is continuing in Leviticus 6 and the rituals and requirements that God had set up for forgiveness of sin. And then moving into Romans, where yes, there was the law, but Jesus came. Jesus came as the new covenant. His blood is the final sacrifice. And now we live through faith and we believe. And then closing it out in Psalm and how great God is from the beginning. From the very beginning. He is so great. I just love today. I hope you did too. And I hope you come on back for tomorrow, which will be day 95. And until then, have a fantastic day and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.